Welcome back to my channel. My name is Michael and I'm the owner creator of Hoovud. I just moved my entire home and studio to this new location and I hope this will be a place where I can continue to grow Hoovud and develop the craft even further. I apologize in advance for the sound quality. I'm still learning video editing and uh, voiceover. I started uh, Hoovud in 2017 in a very small garage before moving into a larger space in the city of Lund. At the time I was uh, still learning to make hats and I was missing a lot of tools um, and as you can see today I have a myriad of items, tools and a lot of things which are still not shown in the video as of yet but I will probably make another episode where I will explain and talk about how I grew Hoovud over the past six years and how I learned the craft and what was my inspiration etc. So I wanted just to start these couple of episodes just talking about what I do every day in the studio and really to tell you about all the steps of making a hat. Um, specifically a hoovered hat as my craft is probably a bit different from uh, what you've seen before. Um, and that's because I learned most of the things on my own and I discovered old ways of crafting hats from research, uh, mainly books and uh, simply just looking at an old hat. You can just learn a lot from it just by observing how they were made and um, looking at all the materials that contains in a hat. And there's a lot more to, to learn, of course. There, this is a never-ending story of uh, figuring out how things were made in the past and how you can make things even better. Uh, and that's just the beauty of the craft because you're always looking for new ways and you're discovering how different felts will react to the way you, you treat them to steam and hot iron, etc. And um, even making a sweatband is a thing that can be made in several ways. Now, a great video editing effect that I just learned is to speed up certain segments of, um, of video because as you can see uh, and as probably you've seen before in the previous episode I will be sitting down quite a lot and doing some sewing work as hat making is not only about blocking out a felt meaning shaping a felt over a wooden object time is spent on sewing items onto the hat and it's what makes the hat so beautiful So let's get back to the video and talk about what I'm actually doing. So this is a marketplace uh, hat which I'm working on and I'm currently doing a underwelt brim. And this means that the brim has been foldered under the brim um, and then it's being stitched into place. Um, and this is a really a beautiful treatment of the brim which gives it extra protection and just a very nice finished edge. Now this part of the process is very time consuming and it requires a lot of focus uh, on my part because you have to make sure the stitching is done um, evenly all the way around. Um, I don't use a sewing machine for this type of work mainly because I find the handmade hand sewn thread to be much more nicer than a sewing machine. Obviously um, there are many out there who probably can use a sewing machine much better than I can and uh, for that reason I stick to making things by hand. And because of this process takes so much time I prefer not to sit still for too long so that's why I have to make other things in between and then get back to the brim at a later stage, probably later in the day or the day after. I 
I'm always working on several hats uh, at the same time because uh, it enables me to jump in between different steps of each hat and uh, for some hats they need to dry overnight and instead of just waiting for it to dry I can start working on something else and I'm also uh, stamping the sweatpants with initials and logo logos etc uh, which also takes a little bit of time and you also have to wait in between to let the machine cool down before you change the letterings and the symbols etc And the sweatpants are all made in the studio and everything is cut to size, shape um, and then embossed with a machine that I have in the back. And it makes for a nice customization of the sweatband for, for you to choose anything you want as long as I can stamp it of course. Custom orders are always a top priority and when I have some spare time I focus on making hats for the marketplace and usually the marketplace hats are made the way I want them to so basically I explore new styles new ways of making the hats and different details to to show what I can make The quality of a marketplace hat is equal to a custom made one. I have a lot of fun making any type of hat that I do want to make sure the quality is of the highest that I can provide. You will also notice how the process of attaching a sweatband to a hat is also one that takes a lot of time. And I also don't use a sewing machine to attach the sweatband. And this is mainly because the sewing machines make very narrow stitches, which in the long run actually can make that part of the hat much weaker. Um, if you should in the future have to replace the sweatband and you need to reblock, reshape the hat, um, that part of the, the felt can be too weak to even change so that's why I, I prefer to do it by hand and I can ensure the, the quality as well The letters on the machine has not yet cooled down, so I cannot really remove them until it's basically I can put my hands on them. So normally it takes around half an hour in between stamping each item, um, and then I can remove and replace with something else. In this video I'm wearing a different hat from the past episode and this is actually the Labor Lucky Fedora which I've had for several years and this one is made 
to be extra bulky on the top so it's like more boxy more straight on the sides and almost looks a little bit exaggerated but it's just the way I like it it's made from a hundred percent beaver fur and I basically wear this every time I go out of town or go to somewhere for shopping or picking up posts etc and then I have several other hats which I use for different occasions so I'm always wearing something on my head it's not very common to see people wearing hats in Sweden and I definitely stand out when I'm in the city and it's not something that bothers me at all because I'm simply being myself by wearing the clothes that I want to wear and wearing the hats that I want to wear and I'm not overly concerned about when and with what kind of clothes you should wear a hat because you can wear it with anything I simply don't want to have to find an excuse to wear a hat I just want to wear it when I feel like it I want hats to be used all the time and that's why I don't want to restrict it to being something you wear only for certain occasions or with a particular type of clothing and it should be something that's uh, worn because it's functional um, it's protecting you from the rain and the the wind and the, the cold and the heat um, it's something that has been forgotten and uh, hopefully it's coming back again the realization that hats are very functional and um, even though we do want to get some sun we also have to protect ourselves I'm often asked by clients to recommend certain styles, certain proportions of the hat that would suit their features and for me it's a very difficult thing to do. I mean it's easy to give suggestion but um, deep down you have to find the style that you foremost need, want to wear. Um, you always have an image in your, your mind about how you want to look and um, from there I can give suggestions but the the way hats have developed in the past it's it started out to be a hat with very tall crowns and then they just became shorter and shorter until they became just very tapered hats and very short brim um, and there's a reason why crowns were taller in the past and it, it had a specific function it kept the temperature inside a hat at a certain level so you would always be very comfortable and I mean that's the only one of the reasons um, I'll probably do another episode talking about the proportions of the hat because there's so much much you can say about it I've had this machine for a very very long time now and it was one of the first major investments I did to the company um, because I wanted to have a machine that could stamp the leather properly and um, the ones I've seen in the market were smaller and, and cheap made machines that did not stamp straight and uh, it was difficult to to make the correct settings and this one turned out to be quite straightforward even though you have to practice a couple of times before you get it right and you have to find the right temperature and uh, the right amount of time you wait in between the stamps and um, the time you need to actually heat up the machine um, you only have a simple gauge on this one that shows you the temperature but um, you sort of have to figure it out by doing
so this video was um, actually two hours long and I managed to cut it down and also fast forward for different segments to to make it easier to watch because it's probably not as fun to just watch me stitching a sweatband all the time but, um, this is also one to show and let you know that it's the work does take a lot of time just because of this and um, there's a reason for it and quality is most important and I simply have to work in a way that I feel comfortable doing it. I use my smartphone as a timer for the most temping machine. Um, it's a way to keep track of the heat and to make sure the, the dye of the stamp is hot enough. And I will show and explain more about this in a different episode, that's why I cut this part short. It's worth to mention that I work on several sweatbands at the same time. So if I stamp the logo on one sweatband, I'd rather stamp five or six at a time uh, in order to save time as well, being more efficient. Because certain, certain things you can actually stamp uh, the same on several sweatbands, but then it will differ between the size and the quality of the felt and any customization that has been requested. Shaping a hat can be made in several ways and I have different stages for shaping the hat and making sure if the fibers are um, completely attached to each other and you want the felt to become more dense by getting out all the water from, from the felt. The, the steam and the heat releases the bond of the fur and from there you make a shape a desired shape of the hat and uh, fuse them back together again and doing this correctly will 
help to ensure that once the hat is finished it will maintain its shape for a very long time. What I'm actually doing here is creating the, um, the brake line between the crown and the brim, um, which is needed before you can attach the, the sweatband. And there are machines out there, uh, a plater machine that actually makes this process a little bit faster. And I have one of those coming in in a couple of months, and hopefully before summer. But you can get by making hats in a very simplistic way. Um, it just takes a little bit longer to do it properly. And what you see here is simply just the way I like to make hats and it is in no way the right or wrong way to, to do it. And Every hat ma maker out there is doing things differently and even larger companies are doing it a little bit differently as well. I have a lot of plans for my studio and I think you will see over time um, the studio will change quite a bit. The, the current space that I'm using is just uh, uh, one fourth of the total space and um, this is even what I'm using right now is even larger than what I had before and therefore before my studio was very compact uh, into one small space. and. Now I have the opportunity to really stretch out and to have several stations for different things I do in making of a hat. And I do want to have another blocking station like this for being able to jump between hats in a more convenient way. The more stations you have, the, the more things you can keep at one place and then work on it when you have the time. And for me, that's it's a way to make things more efficient and without working harder. And should I have the opportunity to hire help in the future, then the space would make sure that uh, you can work separately. This week I completed building this shelf. Um, I was actually in tended to purchase furniture but the price of furniture has gone up significantly and you can basically build things much cheaper even though the price of wood is still expensive um, kind of strange living in a country where you have a lot of forests and the wood industry has been huge in the past but wood is still expensive most of the working tables and furniture that you see have actually been built by me um, mainly because I couldn't find a, a similar furniture any, anywhere else and if I found a custom furniture maker then the price would be too expensive and it's hard to justify buying expensive furniture when you need to spend on materials for hats
for me it's very important to have quality checks between different stages of making the hat I mean I just like this I check when I finish doing something and also before I start the next step I, I check the hat again for any discrepancies um, if there's something that is wrong then it's easier to fix it at that stage than to wait when the hat is finished going back to this custom built shelf it really has helped me to ensure that uh, the hats can dry undisturbed and not being in the way for for other other stages Even though the hat looks near complete, there are still many details that need to be made to it. Um, still a couple of stitches here and there, and then the final shape of the crown and the brim. And not to forget, you still have to make a liner inside the crown. The liners inside the hat is also fully assembled in the studio. Um, they're all adapted to the specific crown style and the size of the hat. This contraption is called a flange and it helps to ensure a smooth finish to the brim that is consistently even all the way around um, and this can look in several several different ways it can be made with a deeper flange so it's leaning more inwards towards the crown or it's just very uniform all the way around
I truly hope you have enjoyed this video. It's definitely different from the last one and I hope to improve in the future. Definitely I need to work on the sound and also being able to show you more of what I do, but that all comes with time. Um, so I'll leave you to watch these few seconds that are left and uh, hope that you will like, share and subscribe. We'll see you next time. Thank you. And of course, if you have any comments, any questions you like to ask, please feel free. I'll be happy to answer.